welcome 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 this afternoon welcome this 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 uh april afternoon april 9th which it is uh, we're still in the season of amplification so hopefully during the season you're still pulling and getting that double proportion of, of god's spirit god energy uh we welcome you back to world of akiba lands roots and culture African history class. World of Akiba Lands Roots and Culture African History class. Today we are still continuing our slow intro into ancient Egypt. So we're going to continue on that. So what we'll do is uh, one, thanking everybody for stopping by and coming in, knowing that we are working toward our Garvey days, our Garvey moments, accepting the responsibility of becoming a family globally. Accepting responsibility of becoming a family globally. That's mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and to the point where we are working toward self-determination, where we are a family that takes care of each other, all right? And then prepares, showing thanks for the, the, the ancestors that have gone before and done so much great work to get us here. And then continuing to lay the foundation for those young brothers and sisters and spirits who are yet to come and those who are still who are here growing up and so to come after so let us continue developing that foundation for us as a people and becoming and in, in developing a greater community i like to ask all those who are watching on facebook uh one because we this is the rise of the african the social media pan-african movement is our focus for the year Yes, we may come up to something else, but the rise of the African is deeply, deeply uh, uh, important in our focus because we want to make sure that definitely we have a resurrection uh, globally. And I don't know if y'all seen it, if y'all watched it last night on the uh, uh, after stream where we discussed and announced the EAC, East African uh, Community Federation, uh, coming together, adding the Congo to that 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 group and becoming Africa's first world power again the rise of the African you see it that's that way the rise of the African it's not just something that we are saying it's something that is in the spirits the hearts and the minds of millions of people in the diaspora and so let us continue being a part of this so that we can elevate ourselves as a people if you haven't seen it take a look at it and you pull it up google it or Go back and take a look at uh, uh, Afro stream from last week. You, you'll find it on uh, our YouTube page, the African Speaks YouTube page. You'll find it on uh, our Facebook page. And if you're watching us via Facebook, please don't forget to hit like, comment, and share. This is how we do COR, which for us in our community is called community outreach. It's how we reach out to the community, informing them, connecting them, relating to each other, showing each other that we care about each other, showing each other that we love each other, showing each other that you're not out here by yourself. You're not out here by yourself. Where we're learning more about ourselves. And so we we also, if you ask, watching us via YouTube, I had a lot of people, a couple of people hit me up the other day. It was like uh, last night watching on YouTube, and I appreciate you. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the notification bell so that you can get Anytime that we, we are streaming a multi, multitude of programs that you are a part of that. You get to see that. So like, comment, and share. Uh, we'll get it to as many people as possible and then subscribe. And now we also have it streaming live. I need to check that again on our uh our website uh, we were having some issues with all of our websites and so uh go daddy I don't I, if y'all are on go daddy don't if you building a website don't go don't go to go daddy <laughs> not not right now uh they're they're working some things on the back end that I'll say but we do have uh programming that we do throughout the week which is a Keyblade inspirational Sunday which is tomorrow uh, we have African Speaks on Tuesdays. We have the Afro Stream, which is Pan-African News from a Pan-African perspective on Thursday nights. Last night we did it on Friday evening. And we, we might add some programming for Friday evening because we got great responses on Friday evening. Um, and then today we have African History class, right? Roots and Culture, World of Key Blend Roots and Culture class. And after this, we have Understanding African Spirituality at 2 o'clock. So we, we also have, uh, we introduced the world to uh, all black everything. And we had this uh, speakers come up 
uh, and speak on our behalf, uh, Pastor Mayberry and Sister Adrian. Uh, we're going to see what they do next week. All right. They, they some good topics they, they're pulling up and working on uh, again. Uh, we are here for the, the, the sake of the rise of the African. And so if there's something that you have, I know I'm not, in, you know, I, I get, I get, <laughs> I get some flack. I get people giving me kudos for being the African. And then I have some people who, who, who give me some beef about it. <laughs> I'm like, why are you giving me beef about being the African? Okay. Or don't get mad. You just be your African. And so what we ask that, um, everybody, uh, uh, if you have a voice and you need someone to help you manifest that voice, please hit me up, let me know, and I'll do the best that I can to make sure that the word that is in you and the information that is in you will manifest itself and people get to hear what you have to say in regards to the rise of the African. All right. Now, uh, again, I have not been... Um, uh, I am the Malachio. I was voluntold. I was given the, the responsibility, uh, which became something a part with something that I, I internalized to teach these classes to the greater greater public. Um, taking my time and learning, I am the Malachio in, in Swahili, that's the seeker. So I'm the seeker of understanding, knowledge, and wisdom. And as I, I get it, I share it. As I get it, I share it. And, and I, I try to develop an understanding as much as possible, as much as possible. So that when I'm sharing it, it's it's a clear uh, uh, lesson that is that you can you can digest, you can and, and internalize and become a part of. Um, this particular information today was uh, well not today. In general, during this this series, we get this from what we call the People's Library, which is a six terabyte and now it's twelve terabytes of African history data video articles papers pictures you name it it's in there and so i'm going through all the other information that we'll be learning uh in reference to african history class and Af you know our roots and our culture uh, because we said that this education is an education that affords us two things an Afrocentric education, an education from an African perspective, not learning your history from some other race that gives you the definition of who they want you to be, where you're not achieving your most, your, your most uh, 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 greatest or powerful uh, 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 goals, talents. Everything is, is built or, or everything that you're doing is built to maintain their culture and not yours. Not getting you to see who you are in the eyes of the creator, who who your people were in, in reference to the foundation of history. Wow. Where we gave it everything. There is nothing that is being done in today's world that does not come from the foundation of African wisdom, ancient African wisdom. And so we were learning about civilizations and cultures uh, here. And we say these are the different various um, areas of, of culture. Yeah, our attitudes, beliefs, our language, the customs, the rights, the behaviors, faith, religion, food, arts, drama, music makes up culture. And we said, you know, knowing that we were the first civilization, the largest and most greatest civilization on the earth before anybody created any type of civilization. And we said civilization is a complex society of five characteristics, advanced city, <laughs> excuse me, yes. Uh, uh, specialized workers, absolutely. Complex institutions, recorded keeping, and, and advanced technology, absolutely. What? And that's why we're going to slow roll on our uh, studies of the life of ancient Egypt. Because ancient Egypt was, it is, not even was. And we're going to say Kemet. And as we continue on, you're going to see. Me flip from saying the Egypt word, which is a word given by Greece and Rome, but to saying Kemet, which is the the word that they have for themselves, right? And so we're gonna slow roast this, and we said we're slow roasting this due to the fact that ancient Kemet is the foundation of modern society, and I I got to get that into you. Your everything about who your ancestors are. helped develop modern society in the world in which you live in today. 
Now, when you connect that, so if if if, if uh, you know, example, you have uh, Muhammad Ali's kids. You cannot know that Muhammad Ali is your dad and not give your best in the world. You may not be a boxer, but Layla is a boxer, right? But it it makes you feel some kind of way. It makes you understand who you are. It makes you drive a little bit different. Another thing. And it's not even so ancient. You deal with uh, 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 Bob Marley. I remember showing the kids uh, at, in World of the Keyboard one year uh, an image of Bob Marley playing in major concerts and the consciousness of his music. And we talked, and then I played one of his sons. I said, who's that? And they said, that's Bob. I laughed. I said, not only do they play in the, in the spirit in which their father, that was possessed within their father, they also resemble their dad. You know, I was jamming to Damon Marley this this past week. Uh, Speak life. I played that for the kids too, and show them how, when you when you can see where you come from, when you can see what's in your genes and what's in your DNA. Even though, let's go let's go take it early. Winans, you man, please. How many generations did the Winans produce of, of, of full blown gospel singers? You got to know what your culture and what your roots are and connect to it, and sometimes that leads you to where the Creator would have you. Sometimes it leads you to where the creator would have you. At least you're able to tap in to certain things. And so not only did we, uh, are we going to slow roast this with the video that we was watching? Um, we also said that there are some books that are also pulled that I used to create these experiences here. And these are some of the things that you could actually uh, purchase for yourself. Uh, oh, man, I meant to have them. They're over there. They're, over, they're back there. All right. So uh, this is what this has now. We want to make sure that we have a clear understanding of the manipulation of our history and why, right? And because we, again, I mentioned how the the East African Conference Federation or Community Federation, the, the, the EAC, how they're becoming the fourth world power. No, nah, they're becoming, they are now. It's already signed. They signed the documents. Uh, every All the seven continents are, are in, eight continents are in. And they're now one United States of Africa. Yes. Right? And so they're reclaiming their identity as a people. And they're going beyond the boundaries of, of the differences to create something more powerful. And this is what they were scared of. This is what European society is scared of. And this is why we study our history. Because we're going to understand what they did. Right? Okay, Amos Wilson teaches, and then he's one of the books that we had, a couple of the books that we had posted up a few minutes ago, uh, that the manipulation of history is the manipulation of consciousness. If I can control how you think, mm, I control your history, I can control how you think. I control the depth, the depth of which you're thinking. Wow, that's different. Controlling the depth of which you're thinking. Mm, your consciousness. Either you're surface level or you, you know, or, or you are, uh, have an a, a endless abyss of wisdom within your, built inside your, your psyche and your DNA. You got to understand who you are. The manipulation of your consciousness, the depth of your thinking is to manipulate possibilities. Meaning what do you believe that you're capable of, right? So now if you're only thinking on a surface level, you're only going to accomplish surface level things. Now, when you're when you're dealing with when, when we're going to compare the depth of the consciousness of East Africans, because now, of, of course, Africa is, is fighting to become each country in the continent of fighting for that identity. But they fight as individuals. But these brothers said, you know what? This is not just one country on the continent of Africa. This is all of them. So let us unify ourselves and find a stronger identity. Or we will watch Europeans continue to control our lives. Wow. We have, we're walking into an experience of limitless possibilities. But here, when you're dictated and you, you don't know your own history, you're, I, I can guarantee you, the majority of us here in, in the Americas and everywhere else who are deal, still dealing with the mark of slavery and colonialism are still functioning from a limit, limit limited possibilities. If you can't see yourself in a world power or global uh, uh, influence, right, on a deeper level, a depth where you're trying to get people to understand who they are and the creator, you're still surface. Right? And then if you can manipulate somebody's possibilities, you manipulate their power. 
Wow. That's real. And so understand why we are where we are. Because they needed to control us and keep us powerless. Why? Because then it aids to the development of the community that they choose fit. Mm. Not the one that we choose fit. All right. So as we begin, we getting started. Let me drop this real quick. Because I want you to romanticize and fantasize and intimately connect to what your people. Right. Let me get this. Created. Right. It is the foundation. Ancient Kemet is the foundation of Greece and Rome and the foundation of modern society. So when you hear anything about Kemet, they call it Egypt. Fall in love with being the greatest you in God because it is the people who are kissed by the sun showing humanity the greatest ways and displays of divine wisdom according to their understanding right in African spirituality class we say if there's 4200 tribes there are 4200 means of understanding uh, having spiritual awareness there was no one definite we have multiple different uh, great empires that we will go through during World of the Land Roots and Culture class but we're going to slow roast this old Egypt thing we can roll it fast and jump out or we can slow roast it so that way when we move to another uh, empire you're already in love with who God called you to be because of what your ancestors have created and then you can sit down and, and choose uh, to go through the, your, the, 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 the heritage thing the bloodline thing and find out what people you're from and what greatness they applied in the ancient times to the world hmm. so let's take a look and this is called um on the video that we're about to see, he talks about tectonics, uh, architectonics, where America has taken symbols of ancient Egypt and placed them in broad daylight. And we don't even know that they are honoring the development of our ancestors. They're honoring the development of our technologies. They're honoring the development of our, our, our science. They're honoring the, de the development and the c contributions of our culture. They won't tell you this because they can't tell you this and still build a society on what we created because it does not justify what they do to us. It doesn't. I just had a conversation today how they just uh, eradicated or just e uh, not eradicated but elected to finally establish the, the Emmett Till Act where they make lynching. A federal offense they gotta slowly begin to they don't have to but as long as we continue standing up according to who we are who we were called to be after a while humanity is going to have to understand we deserve human rights and if they don't understand it just like the EAC East African Coalition or East Africa I don't know what well, gotta remember what it is I think it's the East African Federation EAF right but what you have to what you'll see is uh we don't need their approval or their acceptance. What we need to do is tap back into the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of who we are in God and continue to build a civilization, nations within nations, nations with power, own school systems, own medical facilities, own, own uh, uh, judicial systems, own police systems, own uh, agricultural areas and, and building infrastructure, our own railways and own bus lines why not because we know that we will be able to you know we talk about giving subpar uh, service that means individuals need to even study even more about the greatness of who we are and so that you understand that black excellence is not something that uh, uh, is not or oh, excellence is not something that is removed from us and we we label it black excellence because it's excellence that will push you towards the state of self-determination understanding that we deserve to have everything that everybody else does so it's excellence in general when you're doing your best 
black excellence when you know that this is attributed to your ancestors it's attributed to your history it's attributed to what the creators pulled in you it's contribute to your connection to your people there is a there is definitely a difference between excellence than black excellence because excellence can be stolen and taken from anybody and you can give anybody credit black excellence comes from your connection to your people your culture your heritage and our place on the planet as given to us by the creator let us continue with the history uh video of the day we're finishing this the piece up with uh Roland and, and uh Andrew Brown be added to the United States of America let's see so it's from that framework that we can begin to look at why Egypt was built on the Potomac River now what he where we left off here he was uh he's he's talking about um the Washington Monument and the Washington Monument mimics the architecture of uh ancient uh Kemet and a lot of with the foundation that they created the 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 uh, constitution and how they governed themselves came out of Kemet. A lot of the sciences and mathematics they use uh, religion in terms of how they rewrote it, Egypt and Greece rewriting it, religious stories came out of Kemet. Right? Um, talking about spiritual disciplines, you know. Uh, religions you know Kemet then also um, dealing with the importance of why you know people are afraid and that's what we get at, to even speak on it He's, he talked about how uh, with George Washington being a Freemason how all the sciences of the Freemasonry all the sciences of the Freemasonry come out of Kemet they didn't create anything new everything that they have came from the society of Kemet, the empire of Kemet, and this is why you know they they're not going to use the African name for it, Kemet. They're going to use Egypt, but they're going to change it. Then they're going to change the names. They're going to change stories. They changed and rewrote everything so it fits their culture. It's what a people should do: find something that fits their culture. It's what Africans and African Americans should do: find things that fit our culture and embrace those. Let's go, because. The Masonic Founding Fathers of, of, of the United States believed that they were continuing the legacy of, of Osiris and Horus. They believed that Masonry began in ancient Egypt, which it did, but thousands of years before. And so they literally <clears throat> created on the banks of the Potomac River a model for ancient Egypt right here on the Potomac. So that's the constructural framework for Egypt on the Potomac. So when we began to look at <coughs> some of these structures in DC. You know what, you're talking about the structures. Yes. Before the structures went up, there yes. had to be a layout. Yes, There had yes. to be a plan. Exactly, exactly. There has been great debate <laughs> about Pierre L'Enfant. Mm -hmm. Now, now, I want you to look at uh, uh, Brower's demeanor when he he laughed he giggled he it was like he he slipped deep into the the joy of I know this truth right here you see? <laughs> it was something and and that's when you know what you know what you know before we even get to whatever he's going to say particularly it's the, the the joy of being aware of who God is who God has been to our people what we did from our awareness and now the fact that what we can do with the reality of knowing that feeling that man I, just, I love that chuckle let's go his role right and Benjamin Banneker and his role exactly our very special guest that heavyweight champion of the spoken word Ty Gray L has something to say about that let's hear what he has got to cool. say we owe Benjamin Bannock. So we come to this place this hour to pay tribute to a man whom without his craft and genius we could not enjoy this land. Mm. We honor Benjamin Bannock for the services he rendered. To the District of Columbia he brought prominence and splendor. And if we made a list of the many tools he gave us, we'd see America owes him for all the labor he saved us. He saved us with his almanacs. So the farmers owe him a debt. He helped them understand 
the 17-year locust threat. He taught them crop rotation, which prevented extra toil. He explained water irrigation and how to replenish the soil. His arithmetical skills and command of astronomy assured America's good fortune and strengthened its economy. And two whole centuries before Einstein theorized on relativity, Mr. Banneker declared it and proved our connectivity. He handcrafted a clock in 1753 that for more than 50 years measured time accurately. And he was the first known black man to publicly protest slavery. His indictment letter to Jefferson proved his brilliance and his bravery. Truth is that most who know have always thought it a pity that our nation's capital is not named Banneker City because mm. entirely from memory, within two months of being called, he mapped out all its streets, its parks, its avenues, its mall. And remember, Pierre L'Enfant was only the sketch artist. It was Benjamin Banneker who was the actual chartist. So it is only befitting that he be immortalized with his countenance set in stone and his work sensationalized. For if not for Benjamin Banneker, there's no telling where we'd be. And remember, he was the black man that saved Washington, D.C. Beautiful. Ty Gray L. L. <coughs> now, we know that uh, there was wisdoms that came with us with that journey of the transgenerational uh, slave trade, transatlantic trade, slave trade, excuse me. We know that there were informations, there were intelligence, there were brilliances that came with us, that was built in us. We know that as 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 uh, when they made us slaves, they tried to take, we didn't have any rights to our intellectual property, so they took what we were giving to society as though they did it themselves. And so you couldn't give Benja, Be Benjamin Banneker his props but now that we have access to information. And that's the thing about people, if you want this, uh, uh, this uh, 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 people's library, just hit me up and I'll make sure you get a copy of it. We'll work out you getting a copy of this, this uh, people's library so that you get all the videos that I have in here and all the history that we have in here because we have tons and tons of history uh, in here. But we, we have to know that that was stolen. There's so many things that were stolen from us. And now that we have access to information, how are we utilizing it? There's a brother in my community named Walamo Latunji, who's the one who charged me with this responsibility of doing this, uh, still collecting data. It is his passion to collect and teach and show. And so this is why we give it away for free, because there's a lot about us we don't know. I just made a rhyme. <laughs> Let's continue. Very special gentleman. Okay. So now we talk about the layout in these buildings. All right, and, and let's put Banneker into context. 1797, when Banneker was hired uh, to work on the survey, 1797, 99.9% .9 of Africans living in America were enslaved. So why was Benjamin Banneker why? selected to perform this very important task? Banneker was an astronomer. Banneker was America's first African man of science. Banneker was a free man. It was Thomas Jefferson who hired Benjamin Banneker to work alongside Andrew Ellicott to do the survey. Now, let me put this in context. The Constitution said that the capital of this new, new nation would be a 10-mile square. Mm -hmm. So Thomas Jefferson hired Andrew Ellicott to survey the, the terrain, but Benjamin Banneker was hired to survey the heavens to make sure that this 10-mile square was going to be aligned to the rising the transiting and the passing of the sun, the moon, and specific stars so that certain energy <coughs> would be channeled throughout this 10 mile square. This is architectonics at its best. Architectonics, this is something that it resembles the things that they used to do in ancient Kemet. Mm, 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 mm. This is a beautiful thing. And realizing that, yeah, the Europeans couldn't do it. It wasn't birthed in them, because we're, Where's he going? The first African man of science? No, there were many of us, but he had the opportunity. You know, it's it's still in us today. You know, we, we when you talk about the power of our DNA and the information that is in our DNA uh, and the information that they're seeing in our DNA, that happens just to bubble up when given the opportunity in that moment to tap into spirit, 
We are spiritual beings. You know, let's continue. I love this. So we've got to understand why this African man, Benjamin Banneker, was hired to do this job. I found in researching American history that every time white Americans are about to begin a task, they always have a black person, an African person, presence to give spirit or power to this process. So the presence of ben Benjamin Banneker at the initiation of the founding of the first capital within the modern era is not an accident. So Banneker worked for two and a half months. And, and let me just correct one thing that was said in that poem. Um, you know, it's been said that Benjamin Banneker uh, memorized the plans of Pierre Charles Lafont. But let me just correct that. That, uh, that we haven't found the historical record to document that. Mm -hmm. uh, that information was passed down in the book written by Shirley Graham Du Bois around the 1940s. But what we know from the historical record, Benjamin Banneker never met uh, Pierre Charles Lafont. Uh, that he was working on the plans for the interior of the city, but he was fired before he completed the plans. <coughs> and so supposedly Andrew Ellicott was the one who redo the plans. So we're still working to, to, to fit Benjamin Banneker into that story. Mm -hmm. So we don't necessarily have to fabricate anything because mm -hmm. what this man did was phenomenal enough. Anyway. Sure. So in orienting this 10 mile square to the four cardinal points of the compass, north, south, east, and west, we find that it is correctly oriented perfectly. That's Benjamin Banneker's work. Mm -hmm. Ellicott follow Banneker's instructions to lay out the boundaries of the 10 mile square and then this 10 mile square had around its perimeter 40 boundary markers and if you drive around DC uh, Southern Avenue and Eastern mm -hmm. Avenue you can still see some of those 40 boundary markers and so if we look at <coughs> the interior of this 10 mile square we'll find that the mall is laid out in the center of the 10 mile square and more specifically the mall is laid out in the form of a cross in the eastern part of the cross, we have the Capitol building. The western part of the cross, we have the Lincoln Memorial. Mm. And on the meridian line, the north-south line, <coughs> on the southern line, we have the Jefferson Memorial. And on the northern point, we have the White House. And the object that was to sit in the center of that cross, in the geographical center of the 10-mile square, was Washington's Monument. Now, I stop. Was Washington's Monument. This is what they're talking about in reference to the tectonics these are the concepts that came from ancient Kemet, meaning that that all the buildings that you saw when you saw when I, I opened up the, the 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 lesson with the the architecture of Egypt, everything was built for the sake of spiritual harnessing spiritual power and spiritual energy. That's why the carvings became sacred. There was nothing done in, in Kemet that was not related to the issue of being in harmony with man with God, man with man, man with nature. Everything was about being in harmony, spiritual harmony. If you hear African spirituality class, they understood that they lived in a spiritual universe. And so to be able to harness that power of the spiritual universe, you had to build uh, 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 architectures, buildings at a particular way, a particular shape, typical site. And so the whole Washington, all of Washington is created in terms of not all of Washington, but that area of Washington, the governing area of Washington is created from the science of ancient Kemet. Mm. Being able to pull the power. Now you understand that white folks are not doing things for white folks just because they're white folks. They understood tapping into a spiritual energy that is needed to conquer, to rule. So that's why they did it in Washington. Now with us as a people, this is one of the things that we say that black people are not doing. We're not using the tool that is most, most available to us, which is our spiritual powers. But if you only studying history from a European perspective, not tapping back in to Kemet, not tacking back in to Kush. And we said that, you know, we did say, uh, we didn't say it this one previous classes that Kemet is just the daughter child of Kush. They're the immigrants of Kush. Kush came first. And we did the, 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 the uh, empire of Kush. Now looking at Kemet, you're going to realize how great Kush was because Kemet is only a fraction of what Kush was. Hmm. Yeah, that's a lot. Because Kush was much larger. They lasted longer. Man. They were able to defeat what Kemet couldn't. Ain't that something? But 
let's continue. But that's what we that's what we're dealing with architectonics. How much it it resembles the the images of Egypt and the fact that architectonics were, are still being used to this day. So I almost most buildings will point like this absorbing power. And there are certain buildings that, you know, you can't build higher than, you know, that. Well, we'll talk about the Empire State Building later. Let's let's continue which we now know is a Tekken, a 6,000-year-old symbol that represents the resurrection of Asar. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned earlier at the top of the show I was going to prove that it was, it was designed to represent Asar. Yeah. Now, the Washington Monument is 555 feet high, right? You can go inside of the monument and take an elevator up 500 feet to the observation deck where you get a wonderful panoramic view of the city. Spectacular. Before you step into that elevator rock, there is a plaque of George Washington. And above that plaque of George Washington is the Heru Bedet, the same symbol that was carved above the entrance of every temple in ancient Egypt, is above George Washington. Originally, that bedet was supposed to be on the outside of the monument, but before it was completed, a decision was made to move it inside. That bedet honors Asar and Heru. That bedet is a Masonic effort to remember who they were and their foundations began in ancient Kemet. That but that but that is in his next words. But what they're showing you is the honor that the when they put this country together that they had for who we are as a people and what we brought to this world. This is why they couldn't teach it to you. This is why they can't tell you about it. This is why when they're teaching you about Egypt, you, you don't even learn that Egypt or Kemet was a part of Africa. It's like some, some, some foreign land somewhere. You ain't learning about the, uh, its culture. It's just learning how great it was. And every time they show in individuals, and I have, I have the movie inside the People's Library. I might drop that next week. Where the last movie created of Egypt, all Caucasians. And, they, and understand, Hollywood knows, the, 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 uh, the Vatican knows, Every European nation knows about the blackness of, of Kemet and the influence of the civilization and how every other nation absorbs this knowledge. Everybody knows it and gives it honor except us. I didn't freeze. That's just trauma. How do we sit down and, and watch white, white folks or Europeans secretly give honor to our ancestors, but we have a problem embracing our own. That changes now. That's why World's Vakibla and Roots and Culture is deeply important because we're going to connect you back to who you are to give honor and praise to God for all he has done through your bloodline and your people. And then ask, ask God to continue building within us so that we may live on this land or on this, this rock called the earth in a way that it, it pleases the creator after giving us such, such beautiful, beautiful beginnings. Let's continue. That is proof positive that that monument was created to represent Asar, first king of Kemet, and not George, first president of the United States of America. So it's a matter of hiding the truth in plain sight. The public is told that the monument honors George Washington. But real Masons and those who know the history know that it really pays tribute to Asar and represents Egypt on the Potomac. So let's look at a couple of other examples of Egypt on the Potomac. Hmm. We've seen the Lincoln Memorial. Mm -hmm. We've seen the statue of Abraham Lincoln sitting mm -hmm. on his throne on the memorial. Mm -hmm. That statue was created by Daniel Chester French, and it is a copy of identical statues that were carved in Egypt at the temple of Abu Simbel of Ramesses II sitting on his throne. Daniel Chester French traveled to Egypt. He saw that monument and said that he wanted to create something like that in America. He did. He I never knew that. <laughs> I never knew that. I always wondered why they putting him in that big chair. Now we know. They're mimicking the lifestyle of the kings of Egypt or Kemet, one of the greatest empires that this world has ever seen, that has influenced, was it got an if influences from, from Kush, and then it, Kemet wound up influencing all of the European life. Let's continue. He modeled it after 
Abu Simbel in ancient Egypt. Another example, the Washington Monument and its reflection in the reflection pool. Wonderful architectural features, but I can take you to Egypt on my next study tour in July and show you those same structures at the Temple of Karnak. You see <coughs> two Tekkenu, two obelisks, standing in that building, and you see their reflection in their reflection pool. Every temple in Kemet had Tekkenu obelisks. Every temple in Kemet had a sacred lake or a reflection pool. So these... A sacred lake or reflection pool. What? Again, everything is spiritual here. Egypt built things based off of spiritual connotations, symbolisms, and they stole this to be able to receive whatever spiritual powers and blessings that Egypt or Kemet was receiving from, from the on high, from the universe. When the founders put this together, they said we need that same level of spiritual focus here. Now, there's always, you can, anybody can get spiritual awareness, spiritual power. But it's, the issue is how you use it is the definition. We already know how America decided to use whatever spiritual powers that they've received. Architectural symbols represent what I refer to as architectural sampling. You know how in rap music, they sample yeah. James Brown, mm -hmm. right? You only sample the best. Yeah. So what we're seeing here in D.C. is architectural sampling. American architects, European architects, only sampled the best of architecture. And the best architecture ever created, the first architecture ever created, is African architecture, which is still standing today in Kemet. Please, if you would, talk to us. And we're going to roll for these next eight minutes. This layout, this 10 we're not going to shut square. off at, yes. at two. We talk about the mall, the monument. We're going to get past this on, uh, video on, so that we can start a new video cross, next week. Yes. The Washington Monument, which. Who again? What? It uh, represents Asar. Asar, and okay. It's known as a Tekken. So from now on, I may call it Asar. It is. It, it's Asar's monument. Just, monument. Yeah, okay. It is Asar's monument. All right, okay. So straight, it goes to the White House. One of those crossbars mm -hmm. goes from the Jefferson yeah. Memorial to the monument to the White House. Yes, sir. And if you continue straight past the White House, mm -hmm. you see 16th Street. Exactly. Now, there was some serious spirituality, respect for religion, or something, because on 16th Street, there are, talk to us about okay. 16th Street. 16th Street is the Washington Meridian. Mm -hmm. A meridian is a corridor or pathway of spiritual energy. Mm. A meridian represents the position of the sun at high noon. And in ancient Kemet, the name of the sun at high noon was Ray. Right? Ray represents mm -hmm. the creator on high. Mm -hmm. And it symbolizes uh, the most important part of a person's life, a person in the highlight of their life, mm. you bringing forth your best work. Mm. So <clears throat> meridian lines represent the sun at high noon. So if you look at a map of the Earth, we see that there are 24 meridian lines on the globe, which represents the sun or ray every hour in the 24-hour yes. day. Mm -hmm. right? Now, 24 hours for a day is a comedic concept. The Kemites were the first people to divide the day into 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So Ray represents a corridor or a pathway of spiritual energy. Mm -hmm. So for Washington, D.C., that 16th Street Meridian, 16th Street begins at St. John's Church in front of the White House mm -hmm. and terminates at Eastern Avenue. It is seven miles long. And on the seven miles of 16th Street, this spiritual corridor, you have more churches over 50 churches on the seven mile stretch of land. Mm -hmm. More churches on the seven mile stretch of land in DC than any, any seven mile stretch of land in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. There are several names for 16th Street. Because of the proliferation of churches, some call it God's Boulevard, mm. others call it the Avenue of the Churches. Masons refer to 16th Street as the corridor of light. Stop. I've been to D.C. I walked all over that place. I took pictures. Um, seeing these things and just hearing this, I said, I wish I would have went before I saw this video. Now when you go into places of any, whether you go to, uh, and you know, we'll, you know, I don't know, it might have to be another class, but we're dealing with architectonics around the United States in modern cities. And how many other areas in modern cities have architectonics that reflect the spiritual wisdom and understanding of ancient Kemet. What is in each city and what did they build with it within each city? Because it didn't change. It didn't just start and stop with Washington. 
No, it's all around us. Because the I, I knew for some, when de- dealing with when my first understanding of architectonics that structures are built for the sake of drawing spiritual energy from the universe. And now knowing this, and then that's why they probably only allowed churches on that whole stretch. The the you know was it the 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 hemisphere of light? What they say, you know, where all these churches are. I said that now I have to go and walk in that space. I'm being pulled to say go visit because you need to see that we are that that the ancient wisdom of who we are is here. They're using it, and yet they use it against us. What happens when we click and make a decision to use the available spiritual energy that is around us for our benefit, rather than from the benefit of building a society that doesn't want us here? Let's continue. And that light emanates from the White House, Mm -hmm. according to their belief, their teachings. The light emanates from the White House. And I had a mason at the Scottish Rite Temple shared with me years ago that in their lives they're they taught to refer to the White House as a crystal. What's the significance of that? A crystal refracts light into its seven primary colors, right? Mm-hmm. So that <clears throat> if the White House represents a corridor of light, and that light is a corridor, the spiritual corridor through which that energy is channeled, then it creates a spiritual pathway for God, Allah, Jehovah, whatever your name is for God. This is the spiritual pathway of God. Benjamin Banneker was the person who oriented 16th Street to, uh, to this specific alignment, and he followed the same traditions that were done in Kemet. Every temple in Kemet was oriented to a specific spiritual pathway because with it. Now, before we continue, I want to also say that what a crystal does is also amplifies, like he said, it it, it it reflects light, the seven, you know, seven rays of light out, but it also amplifies what it reflects. So when light hits it, so because crystals are used for for uh for lasers, there's a crystal there that that light goes through that makes that laser a beam. Even in um Star Wars, the crystal is there, it amplifies light. So what they're hoping is whatever spiritual energy that is going through this particular pathway, that energy is amplified yet again. Even though they're using our spiritual wisdoms, you have we we are beings that are free willed, that have the will to either do it, use it for good or bad. That's the journey of Lent. Jesus sitting in there for 40 days and 40 nights. I'm the light. Ooh, let's talk. See what see what see see the similarities. I am the light, meaning that I'm I'm vibrating, I'm emanating something that's coming from somewhere else, but I'm I'm magnifying it. By and you can see that I magnify it. Now, if you want to get to where I'm coming from, you got to come this way. That's how you know America exists. Now we all have that light. This is a different class. If we're not talking about history class, we're talking about uh, a a Keebland Inspirational Sunday right now. <laughs> we we we're gonna talk about, but it amplifies that light. That's what that crystal does. Now the issue is we all have the ability of free will. They freely using our technology to stay in power. So why don't we freely use our technology, our spiritual technologies, to find what freedom feels like? Meaning being able to define ourselves completely, rebuild. We built a nation. Let's build another one that we control from the ground up. I believe that's possible. Let's go. In that temple was the Holy of Holies, mm-hmm. that place where a priest or other properly trained individuals could go and commune with the spirit of God Almighty. You know, I was gonna I was gonna say it it's not just Christian churches that go no. up there. No. It's every denomination. Exactly. And so the essence of what we're dealing with, Rock, is that no religion has a, 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 a hold on the concepts of God. And, and to be perfectly honest with you, there have been more wars fought in the name of God yeah. than there will be people ever saved by God. Uh, religion has been used in, in, uh, for a variety of despicable purposes to control and conquer people. Right now we've got ISIS. 
yeah. over in the so-called Middle East, yeah. beheading people yeah. simply because they don't worship the same God that they do. So we know through our study of history that people have done some terrible things, things in the name, in the name of, name of God. God. But there mm -hmm. is a wonderful understanding that could be gained by studying how ancient people conceived of this concept of God. God is a concept. Yeah. And the buildings or churches were created where people can go, go into those that. structures and receive the spirit, the knowledge of God. Well, another point I want to I want to touch on before we close has to do with the symbols on the dollar bill, the, the great seal. Mm -hmm. Those are African symbols that were created by Masonic figures in order to literally hide in plain sight the comedic influences on the layout, design, and development, not just of this nation, but of D.C. On the front of the Great Seal, we have the eagle, and the eagle <coughs> is holding Here we go. in one talon uh, an arrow, 13 arrows, and the other talon is holding uh, an olive branch with 13 leaves and 13 olives. Mm -hmm. um, we have um, on the chest of the eagle a shield with 13 stripes, we have in the mouth of the eagle a banner with 13 letters and the words E Pluribus Unum. We have above the eagle's head a cluster of 13 stars. That Please finish, but we've got two minutes left, right. and i got to get a commitment from you right now that you're going to have to come back for part two. But I ain't going nowhere. Okay. I'm staying here. All right, all right. <laughs> but, but, but that symbol of the eagle is derived from the symbol of Heru the falcon. And on the reverse of the great seal, we have a pyramid, which is comprised of 13 courses of stone. These are African symbols. And once we know our history and culture, we can relate them back to Africa and interpret them from a correct historical and cultural perspective and glean the knowledge that comes with knowing yourself and then acting on that knowledge so we transform our thinking and our behavior. Boom, we're gonna stop right there. To transform our thinking and our behavior as a people. Because a world who is a, a, a people, a, a country who is using history to hold power over you will not teach you the correct history in the process to regain the power. Mm. They're using everything against us. But and and and. and this is why in African spirituality class, which is next, we're about to go. Um, taking a look at the time. They they use everything against us, right? We, we got to get to the point where we start using what they use against us on behalf of who we are because it is from us, our melanin. And this is why they, they, they discriminate against our melanin, our melanated state, because when we do tap into spiritual powers, we vibrate at a higher level of spiritual frequency than they can understand. Individuals who see who vibrate from a spiritual frequency of 1.618, which is the spiritual frequency of God. Well, individuals who don't, who has less melanin, they say Europeans have a uh, a spiritual framework that's like this. You're going to like this, up and down, because if I go my hands too far out, you won't see it. We'll say like this, right? And then you say uh, Asians, their spiritual awareness is like this, right? Africans. When in, in, in the right phase, spiritual awareness is infinite. That melanin, that, that, that guard particle does something different for us. That's why we can endure all the atrocities that you see us going through. Because of who we are as a people and how we are made as a people genetically. You see, societies are built on the wisdom of who we are and what we do. So now here's a question. Are you ready? Are you ready to vibrate and be who you're called to be from the understanding of your history and what we've been able to create in this world because we were connected to a higher spiritual frequency? Mm. Can you study your history and learn the power that is in you? Can't wait. Let's go. The great cities, 
great wisdom, great awareness. There is nothing about us that is lacking as a people. Not by our genetic makeup, not by our grand design. The only thing that is lacking is our connection to our history and what we've given to this world. And then asking the creator to give us the visions that he gave our ancestors to continue building. We're going to slow roast this thing on, on Kemet because it is the foundation of modern society. And we're going to fall in love with ourselves again. One love.